Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Today we're going to be talking about subsurface in the new Redshift standard material. They've changed the way it's set up and now it's really easy to create cool subsurface materials. So without further ado, less of the waffling and let's jump straight into the video. So we're in Cinema 4D and I've created this really simple setup. I'll just quickly jump out of the camera to show you guys what's going on. Uh, we have this plane here with just an area light kind of illuminating the background. And then I've created a cylinder, chucked that into a cloner. And then I've used a random effector to randomize the position, rotation and scale. And then a push apart effector just to stop any collisions. So that is pretty much it. Oh, and then for the lights, we have just an area light on the right. Uh, the left and then like I said one illuminate in the background and this is going to be pretty important for this subsurface material lighting can really change the whole result and the look that you get from these materials but we'll dive more into that in a minute so I'm going to jump back into my camera and we're just going to get straight into it so we're going to go to create redshift materials and standard and let's drag this onto our cloner uh, just level this out so I can see what's going on and let's hit play turn off bucket rendering we don't need that so straight away we're just getting this very reflective material but we're actually going to disable that so whack that off turn the base off as well and now we've just got a completely black result this is usually the way i would approach it for these subsurface materials just so you can really focus on the look you're getting from the subsurface and then you can dial in the reflection and if you want to mix it with some diffuse as well you can do that afterwards but i find it's really helpful to just go with subsurface first and then kind of build on that afterwards so we're going to scroll down to the subsurface section and let's just enable it by increasing the weight to one. So this essentially is the intensity slider, zero turning it off and one fully enabling it. And by turning it to one, we're now getting this kind of white diffuse look to our material. So what I'm actually going to do to demonstrate this subsurface better is I'm going to disable one of my area lights. So now we just have a light illuminating it from the left hand side and you're going to see why in a minute. So I'm going to go through some of the settings. So straight away color is set to white by default. If I set this to black, it's going to disable it. It's using this color parameter to affect the color of the light scattered on the surface of the object. So like I said, white by default is giving us this white diffuse look. I could change this to red and now we've basically just recolored the subsurface for our material. So we now have this red color for the surface of the object, but we want to start to actually smooth this object out and give it that subsurface feel. Now we can do this through the scale parameter and this value is going to set the distance that light can travel below the surface before it is fully scattered. So the scale by default is going to be set to one. And if I just increase this to something like 10, you're going to see straight away we're already starting to kind of scatter some of that light throughout the object and we can just start to increase this even more. Let's go to 20, even more of it is going to be scattered and then let's go to 30 and now we have a really kind of subsurface scattered look to our objects. Now obviously this is going to depend on the scale of your scene but also the light setup. Now if I go to my cylinder you can see I have a radius of 37 centimeters. So if I push the subsurface kind of above 37, you're not really going to get too much of a difference. So here we are on 37. If I go to something like 100, you know, it pretty much looks the same, but now we've kind of lost some of that color. So it's really worth taking into consideration the scale of your scene and the objects you're trying to apply this material to. But then secondly, we also need to look at the lighting. So I'm going to dial this back down to something like 20. I think that gave us quite a nice, you know, soft result to our material. Um, but I'm just going to jump out of the camera. First of all, what I'm going to do is actually just create a backup because I quite like this light setup. Let's attach a target tag to the new one and drop the cloner in there. And you can see as I start to move this light around, you're just going to get a completely different result. And to be honest, if you're using a subsurface materials, you really do want to be using area lights because something like a dome light is too soft, is too um, large, and you're not going to get that nice color variation throughout your objects. So something like an area light like this with quite a low spread, you can see I've set it to 0 0.1, is going to give us a really nice kind of contrasting look to our objects and also just give you that nice color variation. So let's just enable both of the area lights we originally had. And now we're getting this really nice scattering throughout our object. So let's dive back into the settings and go over a few more things. 
So obviously we have our scale, which we have set to 20. And this is actually being calculated by multiplying the RGB components of the radius. So at the moment we have a white, so it's basically 100%, and it's multiplying that by 20. So if we set this to black, again, it's going to disable that scale and we're back to that original setup we had at the beginning where it just feels like a diffused material. So you can already imagine how we can play with the color of this radius to get some really interesting results. And in order for me to demonstrate that, I'm actually going to just change the color back to white. And I think I'll actually disable that second area like just to kind of demonstrate again how it looks. Um, so let's go to our radius. Let's set this to something like, uh, let's go for red, <laughs> same as the color. But we're actually getting quite a weird result. We're getting some of that red in there, but we're also getting quite like a bluish color. And that's because the light that you have set will appear in the brighter areas, so closer to the surface, but any dark areas that aren't getting much of that scattering, it's going to give you the complementary color. And the way we can see that is just by pressing this arrow, selecting our wheel icon here, going to the complementary setting, and the complementary color of red is blue. So you can see as I move this around, you can see the complementary color of each one, and you can start to kind of rotate this round. And so for example, if we set this to like a blue, we're gonna get that blue in the brighter areas, but we're also gonna get yellow in the areas that aren't receiving as much light. So you can create some really cool results from this. So for example, if I was to set this to like quite a bright pink, and then I blended that with a blue color for the color of our subsurface, something like this. We now get a cool mix of like blue and purple in our result. And maybe let's bump this scale up to something like 30, which is just gonna scatter it even more. And you know, we're just gonna try to find like a nice balance of the two. But now you've got like a really cool result of this blue and purple. And I'm gonna turn the other area light back on just to brighten the scene up. And you can see how we can create some really cool results from this. So I'm going to go back to kind of the original result we had at the beginning of the video. And to be honest, this is kind of a juggling act. So if we make this too vibrant, it's going to take away from the color of the radius. And likewise, we do the same with the radius. Um, it's going to do the same. So I like to kind of just, it depends on the result you want, but I like to make both of these kind of slightly desaturated and that way you get a nice blend of the two, but it still feels vibrant and colorful and you can get a really cool result. So that pretty much covers the bulk of subsurface. There's a couple more settings which are kind of more technical. So for example, we have the mode currently set to ray traced diffusion. Now this is a slower method, but it is more accurate. So if I was to do a bucket rendering of this quickly. Okay, so that took 43 seconds. So let's quickly just take a screenshot and let's go to point-based diffusion and do a bucket render of that and see how long that takes. So you can see straight away, much, much quicker. We're looking at five seconds for a frame instead of 43. And to be honest, if we look at the difference between them, uh, it's not really too much different. I actually think I prefer the point-based diffusion in this case. It's given us a lot more color. You can see around the bottom of these cylinders when we go to point-based, it just fills it with more color and more color variation and overall just makes it feel a bit more vibrant and a bit more artistic. So in this case, I think I would actually go with a point-based diffusion. But like I said, if you want something a bit more photorealistic, I would probably stick to ray traced. It's also worth noting that if you're using progressive rendering, even if you have this set to point-based diffusion, it's going to default to ray traced. So point-based is only gonna work when you do your final bucket render, but any other time whilst you're using progressive rendering like we are here, it's going to display as ray traced. So I think that's everything from Subsurface. There's some really cool ways you could play with this to create some really cool results. Um, I'm gonna dive into it more and maybe create some more advanced tutorials in the future. But that's just a brief overview of Subsurface in the new Redshift standard material. If you did find the video helpful and you found it useful, please give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the video kind of make its way out into the ether of YouTube. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions or if you just wanna show some support and love. I really, really do appreciate all the comments and I read them all and I try to reply to as many as possible. Finally, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And until next time, enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.